In this video, I am going to discuss various patterns of sensory loss and its anatomical localization. Diagram A is showing hemisensory loss and it is seen in case of contralateral supratentorial hemispheric lesion. Diagram B is showing cross type of sensory loss and it is seen in brainstem or infratentorial lesion. Diagram C is showing sensory level and it is seen in case of spinal cord lesion or myelopathy. Diagram D is showing dark shaded area with proprioceptive loss and light shaded area showing spinothalamic sensory loss with a sensory level. So it is seen in case of brown sequoid syndrome. Diagram E is showing suspended sensory loss that is area above the sensory loss and below the sensory loss is having normal sensations. It is seen in a case of intramedullary lesion. Now coming to importance of sacral sensations. In case of extramedullary lesion, the lesion comes from outside and it affects the sacral fibers of lateral spinothalamic tract first. So there is sacral involvement. And in case of intramedullary lesion, the lesion comes from inside and it affects the cervical fibers first. So there is a sacral sparing. Diagram F is showing glove and stocking type of sensory loss and it is seen in case of length dependent peripheral neuropathy. Another important feature of length dependent peripheral neuropathy is graded sensory loss. So there is distal to proximal gradient in the sensory loss. Now coming to mononeuropathy multiplex, it is a type of neuropathy uh, and it is a non length dependent neuropathy in which there is sequential involvement of non-contiguous nerves. Diagram H and Diagram I are showing cases of dermatomal sensory loss. Diagram H being a case of cervical radiculopathy, I being a case of lumbar radiculopathy. Now coming to this diagram J which is showing distribution of sensory loss in case of various cervical radiculopathies and diagram K which is showing dermatomal sensory loss in case of various lumbosacral radiculopathies. Now coming to importance of saddle anesthesia, if a patient is having symmetrical saddle anesthesia, we have to suspect a lesion in conus medullaris. If a patient is having asymmetrical saddle anesthesia, we have to suspect a lesion in quad Thank you.